right, good morning. Welcome to Salem United Methodist Church on this uh, Super Bowl Sunday and Transfiguration Sunday. I'd like to inform you of a lot of the events that we have going on in the life of our church. Uh, first, if you're joining us today, uh, please be sure to register your attendance with us uh, in any of the, the multiple ways we have for you to do that, your connect cards or your QR code. Um, let's see. Also, be aware that after um, Sunday school today at 1135, uh, the youth are going to be uh, meeting for their Veritas parent meeting. Uh, if you are a youth going on that trip, you need to be there and you need to drag one of your parents there too. So. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Also, we've got a very busy and exciting week. On Tuesday, the Legacy class is sponsoring our community-wide uh, pancake supper. It is a tradition in the church to uh, do a celebration the day before the start of Lent. And so what do you do before you start uh, a season of fasting and devotion? You eat a lot of pancakes. So please come and join us for that. Invite your friends and your neighbors. Um, that is a drop-in uh, pancake supper um, from 6 to 7.30. Uh, the meal is free, uh, and let people know that uh, if they would like to offer donations for the diaper pantry, be it in diapers or monetary, monetary donations, they, they may do so. And then Wednesday is an important day in the life of the church. That is Ash Wednesday. Uh, soup supper will start at 6 o'clock, uh, and then there will be enough time for everybody to, to get that cleaned up and get ready. So then we will start our Ash Wednesday service at 7. All right. There is a church-wide cleaning day that is happening both inside the church and outside the church um, at 8, 8 a.m. on Saturday morning, the 17th. Also, on Saturday the 17th will be our first diaper distribution for our uh, diaper ministry. That's happening uh, at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you'd like to be involved in the distribution of uh, the diapers for the Salem Community Diaper Pantry, uh, you can contact Suzanne or uh, Paula Stevens, too. All right, let's see. The Salem Camp Board Meeting, uh, this will be the first one of the new year, is happening on the 18th at 2 in the sanctuary. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church? All right, Women of Faith have an announcement, it looks like, too, on the 19th. Uh, of February, their meeting. I'd also like to turn your attention to the um, insert in our bulletin. Uh, your new lay leader is Sherry Wilchman, and she is taking on that role with Augusto. And so um, she, there's her, her description there of who she is, if you guys don't know her, uh, as well as what her role is and how she's going to help our church get plugged in to all the different ways in which they can be involved in ministries here. Uh, the email at the bottom is how you can reach her and how you can get involved in our church. It's getinvolved at salemumc.org. All right. There are handouts too, I believe, in the back if you want to invite people to the Pancake Supper uh, or want to let them know uh, about the, the diaper pantry too. So you can hand these out to them uh, if there are people who need to, to use our resources uh, and, and receive diapers. I believe there's also Ash Wednesday handouts too. Any other announcements for the life of the church? All right. Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you. I'm getting pointed to. Okay, yes. We need to fit, we want pre-filled eggs because Easter is coming before you know it. I know we're like, we're at least 40 days out, right? But, but it'll get here fast. So don't forget your pre-filled eggs. Uh, two dozen per family, please. There we go. All right. Any other announcements? Man, we are a busy church. Can we praise God for that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Let us begin with a prayer. Almighty God and giver of all life, 
Your light shines in our lives and your glory is revealed through your son, Jesus Christ. May you reveal his glory to us today as you did to Peter, James, and John on that mountaintop. And may we be filled with his power and may we proclaim with our mouths his presence forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you would, please stand and join in our affirmation of faith as we join with Christians around the world and throughout all time in this important affirmation of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you'd please remain standing and join us in song, and we'll start this morning with Holy Ground. <clears throat>
proceed. Children could come forward for children's time. Dawson, you got it? Come here, Lucy. Come here. Wait, 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 wait. There's two. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You got me all situated? All right. All right. We're going to leave them alone. We're going to leave them alone. All right. And we'll have a seat. All right. Underneath one of these cups is some candy. Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Do I need to shift them around a little bit? Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to shift around. Shift around. All right. All right. We're going to shift around. All right. Which one? Don't lift it up. Don't lift it up yet. Which one do you think has the candy in it? David says this one. Alice says this one. Dawson, what do you think? You think it's this one. Olivia, you think it's this one. Yeah. Dawson, hurt. Which one do you think? This one. Lucy, do you want to come tell me which one you think? Nope. Okay. That's all right. All right. Cade, which one do you think? That one. Cora, did you say, tell me? You think that one too. Let's see. Let's see. We're going to do this one first. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, not that one. Whoever said this one's not it, right? So we got that one out of the way. All right, you ready? We'll do this one that David said. Ready? One, two, three. No, it's not that one either. Huh? No, there's candy. I promise you there's candy. There's more behind me. Yes, I agree. But there's, there's candy in here too. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, not that one either. Not that one. Up, oh, up. Oh, Mason Sawyer. You're, you're got down to a 50% 50, 50 chance. Which one of these do you think has candy in it? I know you know this game. Is it that? Nope, not that one. You picked that one, Sawyer. Wait, I know. All right, Mason, which one do you think? Pick that one. Pick that one. Oh, man. All right, all right, hold on. All right, have a seat, Sawyer, so everybody else can see. All right, so I do believe that Olivia did pick this one. Let's look. Let's see if she was right. Ready? One, two. There is candy. Oh, don't put my candy back, Sister Wister. So there was candy. And if, if you notice that some certain colors... For our our chief's um, loving pastor, right? <laughs> I see some on both sides. I see a little bit on both sides. Extra credit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I am. All right. So this morning, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about something called transfiguration. Do you know what transfiguration means? No. That David says moving into a different gear. That's almost right. We're talking cars. That's um, I, my brain just left me. Can you sit down so other people behind you can see, please? All right. What do you think transfiguration is, Mason? Transformation. Transformation. That does sound really close, doesn't it? And it kind of does mean that, right? So the story that we're going to hear about today is where Jesus goes up on the mountain to pray. Can y'all show me your praying hands? Show me your praying hands. I don't want to. I, oh, that's fine, right? Show me your praying <laughs> hands. So he went up to the mountain to pray, and then when he came down, he, he had a transfiguration. So he changed, right? His face started to glow and things like that, right? Got to hide my candy. I got to find a better hiding spot. All right, so he transformed, just like in this candy, right? The, you didn't really know which one was which, right? Until we were able to transform and lift that light up. Mm -hmm, I like your pink jacket. So we're going to think about today how, how Jesus' transfiguration shows us, shows us a little bit about God, right? Just like how we lifted this cup up and it shows us a little bit about this candy, right? Right? So we'll remember today about the transfiguration, how Jesus changed that we can see God. Yeah. We'll clip it when we sit back down, okay? All right, let's get, let's get our hands together and let's pray. Ready? One, two, three. 
Dear God, we just thank you for changing for us so that way we might be able to see God and that we might be able to be, have him in our lives. Help us that we might be able to shine your light to those around us and that they can see God through us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right, I got a bucket of candy. Do you want one? This bucket of candy wasn't for nothing. Pick one. Pick one. Olivia, pick one. Do you want this one? Pick one. Pick one. Pick one. Pick one and go to your seat. Pick one and go to your seat. Alice, you got to pick one and go to your seat, sweetheart. All right, then go to your seat. Pick one and go to your seat. You got one? All right. Okay, well, then go to my seat. I don't know. Just pick one and go to your seat. We're holding up the service. Where your bag is. Sorry. All right, come on, Kate. All right, I'm going to go sit with you. Here, take my bucket. Help me out. All right, come on. I'm sitting down your row. First scripture, yay or nay? Okay, all right. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the psalmist. And it's Psalm chapter 50, verses 1 through 6. Hear now the word of God. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silent. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. The word of God for the people of God. Our gospel reading comes to us from the gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Hear now the word of the Lord according to the Gospel of Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could, could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, when they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let me get organized here from all our announcements. Goodness. Well, today is a special day, and I'm sure that most of you know one of the reasons anyway, and that is that it's Super Bowl Sunday. But it's also Transfiguration Sunday. It's why I'm wearing white for a high holy day. As much as I would love to just tell you how great the Kansas City Chiefs are, I won't do that. Not going to do it. No matter how much I would really love to tell you, that they have an amazing fan base and are approaching 
the level of a dynasty football franchise. I won't tell you that either. I can't say it today. Won't do it. Won't do it. <clears throat> Instead, I'll tell you about Transfiguration Sunday. And that this day, we remember what happened on the mountaintop. If you would, imagine with me for a moment, perhaps the greatest thing that our culture obsessed with, with money and achievement can think of. Imagine if tomorrow you won millions of dollars in a lottery. It's hard to imagine a more life-changing event that could take place so rapidly. However, it, it happens to the very select few people. And it doesn't perhaps get any better than winning that big of a multi-million dollar jackpot. It happened to a woman named Suzanne Mullins in Virginia who won $4.2 million. And she decided to receive her payments annually. And shortly after that, her son became ill and she racked up millions in medical debts. She borrowed against her future payments and then cashed out the rest of her money. By the time it was all said and done, she had owed her lenders over $150,000. And she's not the only one. If you look at multiple stories of lottery winners, many of them go broke in just a few short years. You see, life is always ups and downs. Generally, it's not as drastic as winning a multi-million dollar lottery and then owing $150,000, but life is always ups and downs. <clears throat> yes, I'll make another Chiefs reference too, if you're, if you're telling me I can, right? <clears throat> the Chiefs are on a bit of a mountaintop high, right? Yeah, right now they are. Mahomes and the Mahomes dynasty, <coughs> or era, not dynasty yet. I won't go that far. They're, they're on a mountaintop high, though. But you guys do not remember the Elvis Gerback days. And you're looking at me and you're saying, who is Elvis Gerback? That's my point. <laughs> For years and years, the Chiefs were horrible. <coughs> and I liked them all the same. But, but I went through with them through the valley, right? And while we might not ourselves have been to Super Bowls and lost lots or, or gone from rags to riches and then back again. I bet that we all have our own experiences of ebbs and flows in our life of faith. I know that I certainly have had similar ebbs and flows in my life of faith. When we experience the grief of loss, we feel that God is distant in our times of doubt and worry, we feel as though we are walking through a valley that seems to have no end. When we experience the closeness of God, on the other hand, we become overwhelmed by God's grace. We know that we are loved and that we are forgiven and that we are called by the God of the universe. And with the gift of knowing God comes true joy like we can never experience. And we experience that true mountaintop high. So today is Transfiguration Sunday. and We remember that event over 2,000 years ago where Jesus' divinity was made known to Peter, James, and John because in that moment of transfiguration, the disciples glimpsed the very glory of God before them. And the very overwhelming light of Christ was made visible to them. The transfiguration is the moment the disciples got to glimpse who Jesus really was. They saw for certain that he was more than just a man. That Jesus stood before his disciples on the mountaintop and before their eyes he changed in front of them. He changed from a very brilliant rabbi connected to God and to the God-man, God in flesh who was greater than Moses and Elijah put together, greater than the law represented by Moses and greater than the prophets represented by Elijah. And so in the scripture this morning, we're presented with a very mountaintop experience as the disciples go up with Jesus to the mountain and this amazing event occurs. 
it should remind you of another story from our scriptures, the story of Moses going up Mount Sinai. In Exodus, Moses goes up to the mountaintop to meet with God. It's there that Moses receives the law and hears the voice of God. And Moses' proximity to God leaves him changed. In fact, as Moses is climbing down from the mountain, what is his face doing? It's shining, right? Interestingly enough, back, uh, back hundreds of years ago, when they were interpreting that shining, they read it as, he had horns. Like instead of his face shining, they interpreted it as he had horns. And so there are depictions of Moses, uh, including one in, in, uh, in Rome that I've seen, a fountain in Rome that I've seen that has Moses with horns because they got the translation wrong. Interesting. But the similarities in these stories abound. Uh, as Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, and so the presence of Moses and Elijah represent both the law and the prophets. And just as the Israelites were afraid when Moses spoke to God and his face was shining as he came down the mountain, so too were the disciples afraid when they heard the voice of God. But now Jesus was standing in front of them, telling them it was going to be okay, reassuring them and telling them not to be afraid. Because Jesus has become the embodiment of God, Emmanuel, with us. And we too have mountaintop experiences just like the disciples and just like Moses where we, experiences the, we experience glimpses of the kingdom of God in front of us and glimpses of the divine. These glimpses, though they are transformative, they are also unbelievable and they are fleeting in this life. And so you must remember those glimpses when you see them. Perhaps the very first glimpse I truly had was when I was a 14-year-old in a Christian summer camp. Some of you might have had similar camp experiences where we have these mountaintop experiences at camp. We're away from distractions in our normal everyday life and we open up to the possibility of an encounter with God. I remember as a 14-year-old praying that if God was really there, I wanted to know God and I glimpsed the divine in that moment as the Holy Spirit stirred something deep in my soul. In high school, I saw the glimpses of glory of God in my youth pastor who loved like Jesus loved. In college, I saw glimpses of the divine when I gathered in worship with all different kinds of people and my Native American friends who worshiped God in drum circles and song and dance. I had glimpses in seminary as my professors prayed for me and I, as I took communion weekly with those who disagreed with me, but who joined in Christ's table together. I had glimpses of glory here in this church every Sunday when I see the children come forward, when I see the expressions of generosity of our church through gifts of money and service to our community, and the fact that we put this diaper pantry together and the ways in which it is going to change our community, all for the glory of God. But we know, however, that no matter how, how awe-striking these moments might be, they do not last and they are fleeting. Looking once again at our scripture in Mark, we see that Peter is so amazed and so moved by the transfiguration that what does he want to do? He wants to set up camp. And so he offers to build a tent, a dwelling for Moses, Elijah, and for Jesus. He wants to prolong the mountaintop experience for as long as he can. There is nothing wrong with Peter recognizing the importance of that day and honoring the transfiguration for what it was, if that is all that he wanted. But Peter wanted to set up camp. He wanted to make dwellings for Moses, Elijah, and for Jesus so that they could never leave the mountaintop. And I wonder how often we do the same. How often do we try to sit in our comfortable places where we once experienced success? How often do we refuse to go back down the mountain as Moses did because we do not want to see the people of God worshiping a golden calf? 
How often do we refuse to go back down the mountain because we know that we are going to cross into something difficult and that the, that the cross of Jesus is going to be coming? The time will come when we have to walk through the valley with Jesus. It's not easy to go back down the mountain, but we can be prepared. C.S. Lewis, the Christian author who wrote the series, The Chronicles of Narnia, you're familiar with it, right? Yeah. They've made movies about it, right? But Aslan in The Chronicles of Narnia, The Silver Chair, said this. Here on the mountain I have spoken with you clearly. I will not often do so down in Narnia, but here on the mountain the air is clear, your mind is clear. As you drop down into Narnia, the air will thicken. Take great care that it did not, so that it does not confuse your mind. And the signs which you have learned here will not look like what you expect them to look when you meet them down there. That is why it's so important to know them by heart. Pay no attention to appearance. Remember the signs and believe the signs. Nothing else matters. The truth in those moments, when God is revealed to us, is what we hold on to, even as we go through the valleys of life. The truth that was revealed to Peter, James, and John on the mountain was not to be forgotten. In this life, we can only glimpse the kingdom of God. But we need to remember those glimpses and the truth that was revealed to us by God so that we know the true nature of who Jesus Christ is. And it, it is the truth that will get us through the days ahead and through the valley. And the valley's coming. I have faced many challenges for extended periods of my life. My, my first year of seminary, my classmates and myself were all stressed. Believe it or not, people dropped out of the program. It was difficult. We felt that maybe we weren't good enough to make it through. I started grinding my teeth at night. Anybody do that when you're stressed? You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> but I started grinding my teeth at night. I was so stressed and worrying. But for all of us, one thing helped us greatly. It was remembering our calling. We would gather in groups and share our stories of how God called us into ministry, of how God was there for us in those moments when we knew it. We would tell these stories to one another, tell the stories of the saints that inspired us, and would remind each other of those glimpses of God that we had to carry us through. The times we knew for sure that God was with us and that God had called us to make a difference in the world. I faced many challenges in my ordination process as I worried and felt inadequate. I, I relied on my church that I served to affirm in me the work that God was doing. And I think also of the great challenges that I faced along with this church faced. The difficulties of pastoral transitions. The difficulties of a country in political turmoil, a denomination in theological schism, and a world shaken through the global pandemic. Great valleys of difficulties. Times when it was hard to see the end of our depths of trouble. But when times are tough, we remember our mountaintop experiences that we've had. We live into the moments where God revealed a truth to us that no one can take away. And maybe that is the truth that you are loved, that you are forgiven, and that God is calling placed on your life. Remember those times and do not forget. You see, we know that God is with us on the mountaintop because God sees us in the, because we see God in the big moments of transfiguration, but is God with us in the valley as well? Jesus had warned his disciples that he was going to die and he was preparing them. And so the disciples began to look for a way out. Perhaps Peter offered to set up camp as an attempt to stave off the events that were going to come in the next few weeks. The season of Lent is almost here, and we know that the cross is coming. Just as Jesus and his disciples knew. There is no way to stop it and no way out. No way to save Jesus or ourselves from the horror of the cross. 
The moment is coming when we must walk through the valley. But we do not do it alone. Christ is with us all the way to the cross. God is with us in our deepest moments of suffering. When we sit with the terminally ill in the hospital room and pray for them, and when they can't help but pray for us in return, you are glimpsing the glory of God. That happened this week, by the way. When we turn on the news and hear of yet another life lost to gun violence, but that someone risked their life to save others, we glimpse the glory of God. And when we hear of a family that lost everything in a house fire, but that their community rallied around them to get them all that they needed, we glimpse the kingdom of God. And we begin to understand that where there is suffering, there is also holy ground. And we begin to see that God is with us, not only on the mountaintop, but also in the valley. Our lives and our faith journeys are full of ups and downs. But we know that God is with us through it all. We grow and are transformed by the mountaintop. Just as we grow through the valley experiences as well. So on t- today on Transfiguration Sunday, we remember the light of God that was revealed in Jesus Christ on the mountaintop. We remember it and we do not forget because it is those moments that will carry us through. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks this day. As many of us do not often remember the significance of Transfiguration Sunday, we give you thanks this day that you did indeed reveal yourself to the disciples on the mountaintop, that you give us those mountaintop experiences, and that you walk with us through the valley. Lord, as we begin this journey to the cross with you, help us to know that you are with us through the deepest trouble that we face. That we're in it together as a church and as disciples of Jesus Christ. And let us now pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. At least not to temptation. But for thy is the kingdom, from evil. for thy is the kingdom, the power, and the, power, and the, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. In just a few moments, we'll get ready to take up our offering. You have multiple ways to give. The ushers can come forward and we'll pray for the offering. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your glory recognized in those who go out of their way to help us, for the ways in which you've gone out of your way to provide for us. We ask, Lord, that these offerings may go to further your kingdom and help your people, that we may be a blessing to reveal your glory to the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. Let me offer you this final blessing and benediction. Go as the people of God the Father, who loved his Son, Jesus Christ, and revealed God's self to, through Jesus to us on the mountaintop. Go as the people of God, having been shown Christ's true nature, revealing that to the world, that God's glory may be known to all people through the Holy Spirit. Amen.